Happy Tuesday. Hashtag my global family. This is Dre Abeda, Coyote Walking in This World, and Real Life is Slater Pueblo Superhero. Also, proud two spirited warrior from the Pueblo of Slater, Laguna, Acoma, and the Philippines family. Yep, this coyote has a lot of family who are basically proud of this coyote. Hey, you know what, family? I'm happy to be back on my schedule. I'm so sorry, family. It's been like what? Three weeks? Seriously. I want to say it's been like three weeks, right? Oh man, family, my little pipe is clogged. Don't forget, family, this coyote is a critical race whiteness intersectional scholar, and this is my vlogging doctoral dissertation project. I am here to create change in the world. And basically, family, what do I do? I make videos of my daily life. I am a survivor of trauma three times over, rape and molestation as a child as a ramification of Indian boarding school. I also survived police brutality in 2008 when an officer arrested me and locked me up for asking for his name and badge number. Privilege does not protect you from the police family. Um, and so I was stuck in my house for nine months. I lost my job. I lost my ability to teach. Literally, family, I lost my teaching job. That was a long time ago. Hey, Zussie Poo. Zussie the Poo. Do you guys want to say hi to Zussie the Poo? Zussie the Poo. I love you. Um, and then also in 2018, family, I am a survivor of an academic white male predator who used me to sleep with my friends. Um, and basically would trigger my PTSD episodes on purpose to punish this coyote family. So I survived, I took it to the university, I got the predator removed family and I protected my family. But as we know, white supremacy rules, so no one really won, right? The predator gets to retire and unfortunately family, yeah, UNM still has a sexual harassment rape problem. Uh, yeah, we have been investigated by the Department of Justice family, and it is still an ongoing problem. So don't forget, family, if you are a survivor of trauma, please seek help, right? We walk in the world a little differently. My PTSD, which I call affectionately my monster, um, can affect my life. But family, what are we here for right now? We are here for some moments of joy. And what does this coyote mean? I mean, we're about to get our yoga on. So not only am I gonna do this twice a week with you, family. I know I used to be doing it five times. It was crazy and it took up so much of my life and it stressed me out. And then my gammy said, she said, you're doing too much. So do it twice a week. On Tuesdays, family, we are going to be here at 10, 15 in the morning, and we're going to do our chair yoga for elders. It's about 17 minutes, family. I switch it off with another one. It's about 11 minutes. So all in all, between 15 to 20 minutes, go ahead and plan on spending with me. In addition to that, family, I will come back on Thursdays once again at 10, 15, family, and we're going to get a meditation on. Susie Boo, he really wants to play. All right, family, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's do this. Let's do some yoga. All right, we got this. And don't forget, family, I um, am a big fan of yoga um, with Adrian. I'm a lifelong member, actually like four years, family. Um, and don't forget this coyote has lost and kept off 110 pounds after gastric bypass family. I was dying at 35. I had several surgeries on my eyes. It took out a piece of it. I had a whole bunch of laserings that hurt like crazy. I was losing feeling in my legs and my limbs. I had kidney damage family. This coyote was going down to 135. So I had gastric bypass has lost 110 pounds and I keep it off by doing cardio, watching what I eat. Um, using the tool that is actually my past and doing yoga with you. So let's get our yoga on. Ah, love ya. We have an awesome chair yoga sequence for you. So you're gonna need a chair and preferably one with no arms. Hop into something comfy and let's get started. my friends thank you for choosing this practice let's begin sit up nice and tall you want to get to where your feet are firmly planted on the floor so your whole foot's on the ground 
And if, if that's not happening for you, then you can bring some pillows or some blankets or just find something, get creative to bring uh, the earth up to your feet. So you can pause the video and do that. And then if you're leaning back in your chair, go ahead and sit up tall. We'll start to just slowly activate the muscles that help us find length up through the spine. So inhale, lengthen through the crown. Imagine a little marionette string just pulling you up from the crown. And let your hands just rest gently wherever is natural, on the knees, on the thighs. Then inhale deeply as you lift your heart. And then exhale, relax the shoulders down your back body. So you're just bringing more awareness and more integrity into the body, but specifically to this line of the spine, right? This plumb line, this center channel. There's all of these meridians of energy, or in yoga we call them the nadis. Um, not naughty, but naughty. And they run through the spine, right? Sometimes we refer to the major points as chakras, but whatever, whatever you want to rock in your mind and in your body, we're just going to take some time to breathe, to slow it down and find mobility in a way that's soft and gentle, but also really supportive and beneficial. So when you're ready, we'll start with the soles of the feet. Lift the toes, press all four corners of the feet down, then lower the toes. Lift the toes and lower the toes. Lift the toes and lower the toes. And one more time, lift the toes, spread the toes and release. Great, lift the heels one at a time. And then feel that tone, that engagement of the quad. Lift the heels, keep lifting, lifting, lifting. Lift your heart. Open your mind to a new experience. And then lower the heels. Here we go. Inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, lower. Good. Inhale, lift the heels. Sit up nice and tall and exhale, lower. Inhale, lift the heels. And exhale, lower. One more time. Inhale, lift the heels and exhale, lower. Awesome. Inhale, extend right leg out just as much as you can. So you don't have to come the full extension unless it goes there, then great. But just bring it up as much as you can. We're engaging our muscles here. So draw the navel in and up a bit. And you're just going to spread the toes here, flex the foot, and then point the foot. Flex and point. It's all connected. One moving part. Flex and point. Flex and point. Two more times. Flex and point. Flex it up nice and tall and point. And now here we go. Rotating big circles here as you bring it down one way and then the other. Cool. Other side. Extend the left leg out. So find your extension today. Engage muscles of the core to support the back. Sit up nice and tall. Here we go. Flex and point. Flex and point, flex and point, flex and point. One more time, flex and point, and then rotating circles as you bring it down, rotate the ankle one way and then the other, and then your foot comes down to the ground. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Interlace the fingertips. You're going to grab the right knee and slowly squeeze and lift. So imagine that femur bone, we're kind of squeezing everything in. You can use the chair to ground down and then lift up here. So we're not here, but we're doing our best to lift up through the armpit chest and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Okay, so everyone's will be a little bit different here. If you can't quite squeeze, you can bring a little towel, like a dish towel even, to be extensions of your arms here and hold it here. Squeeze. And then one more breath here, squeezing and lifting. And then take that right shin and you're going to cross it over the top of the left thigh. Then flex your right foot here. Bring your left hand to the outer edge of your right foot if you can. And then bring your right hand to the top of your right thigh. And we create this figure four here and then sit up nice and tall. Now, if you want to deepen this and you're practicing with me and you want a little more, you can bring it to the elbow crease here and lift the leg up. Okay, but there's... Really no need to push I'm it. Okay, I'm going to keep it nice and steady. Great. One more breath. 
Fabulous. We're going to come back to the squeeze. So interlace the fingertips around your right knee. Squeeze. Then we're going to slowly extend the right leg out long. So you're going to slide your hands now to the back, to the, to the hamstring, to the back of the leg. And extend it out super long, 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 long. And then bring it all the way down. Fabulous. Other side. Interlace. Here we go. Left knee squeezes in and up. Couple yummy breath cycles here. So you really got to bring the breath. Squeeze and lift. Just working where you are today. Appreciating your body in all its glory, all its beauty, all its limitations. Be thankful for this body that you have. It's the only one you got. So it's never too late to instill this relationship of kindness and love with your body. When you're ready, we're going to squeeze and lift one more breath. And then we'll flex the foot and cross it over. Creating that figure four shape on the other side. Grab your foot. And then left hand is going to come down to just gently guide the top of the thigh bone there around and down. So I've been practicing yoga for a long time and, and the benefits are really wonderful. So I'm able to sit up tall here. But I just want to honor and recognize and let you know if, if you're finding that you're sweating a little bit here, yeah, just sitting up tall, you can one, rest in the chair or use your breath. Inhale, breathe into your belly. And exhale, relax your shoulders to slowly start to build more stability right around this spinal column. So you can sit up tall and have a posture that isn't causing pain. A conscious posture. Take one more breath wherever you are here. Something that's sustainable, sustainable posture. Cool, then interlace the fingertips. Come back to the squeeze, the big squeeze. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. And then slide, interlace fingertips behind, slide them behind. And when you're ready, extend your extension. Extend the left leg as long as you can. Inhale and exhale, slowly lower down. Beautiful. Hands are going to come back to the tops of the thighs. Resituate, reset with a deep breath in. Exhale out through the mouth. Beautiful. Right hand comes to the outer left thigh. And you're going to bring your left fingertips either to the back of the chair or maybe you swing it all the way around. You're just going to find a little gentle twist here. You can come up onto the toes if you like for a little more leverage. Breathing deep. Imagine your inhale really traveling down to your belly. So we're not breathing up, but we're breathing down. And then come back to center, take it to the other side, nice and slow. Twist, release, flushing the body. And if you really want the benefits of a twist, use that directional breath, right? Don't breathe up, but breathe in that breath all the way down. Cool beans. Bring it back to center. Inhale, squeeze the shoulders up to the ears. Exhale, release. Inhale, squeeze and lift. And release. One more time. And release. Awesome work. Drop the chin to the chest. Stay here, breathing deep. Wrap the shoulder blades around the back body. So really firm the shoulder blades behind your heart space. And then inhale, lift the chin parallel to the earth again. And exhale, left ear over left shoulder. Stay here, breathe deep. Great, inhale back up to center. Exhale, right ear over right shoulder. Tag a little weight in the elbows here, my friends. Breathe deep. Awesome. Inhale, come back up to center. Here we go. We're going to slowly bring the feet over towards the right of the chair. 
And then you're going to bring your right foot. We're going into warrior two, a supported warrior two. You're going to bring your right foot firmly to the ground, front knee over front ankle. And then you're going to use your core strength. So think up, draw the energy up. Navel draws in and up to slowly walk. And you can also use your hand on the chair to slowly walk your foot out, turn the left toes in, and then slide back so your hamstring is supported here. Virabhadrasana two with the chair. Whoa. And then just stay here, feel it out. Really drop your center, turn the left toes in. And then you can stay here with hands on the chair. Breathing deep, pull that right hip crease back. So that squeeze move we did here, imagine that. And then hands can stay on the chair or maybe we send the fingertips out. Really working from the ground up here, lifting the chest. Now, if this is not if this is not available to you, then so if, if you're here, then breathe deep directional breath, then you're just going to bring one foot forward, kind of creating a right angle, and then the right foot to the side. So one foot forward, one to the side, and work here. So wherever you are, directional breath, breathing deep, inhaling deeply, exhaling completely, inhaling deeply and exhaling completely. Think about lifting all four sides of the torso here. So the front, the back, and both side bodies, nice and long. Take one more breath, you got this. I know the arms are tired, you got this. And then exhale, bring the hands to your heart. And make your way back to center. Use your feet on the earth to come all the way back. So stay connected to the ground. Great, let's try the other side. Really nice work. So we'll walk the, so we'll release the hands. We'll walk the feet towards the left. Just check it out. Plant the left foot firmly and then start to walk the right foot back. You can use the chair to guide you. Turn the right toes in, really press into the outer edge of that back foot. And then use the chair to really support the belly of the hamstring here. And then open up through the hips. Lift and lengthen all four sides of the torso. Maybe you keep the hands down or maybe you send the fingertips out. If you feel good there, stay there. Or maybe you bring the foot back and this is better for you, creating this 90 degree angle with the tops of the thigh bones and breathing deep. Okay, inhale, lots of love in. Love your body. Love this life. Explore space. So reach way beyond the fingertips here. Take energy way out beyond the physical posture. Notice where you might be gripping or holding, soften. And we'll take one more breath. Breathing really down, down, down into the belly. And then exhaling, hands to heart. Awesome work. Here we go. Use the toes, feet on the ground to come back to center. Take your time, take your time. Wonderful. Then walk um, your bum just a little bit closer to the edge than we had before. And we'll inhale, sit up nice and tall, release the hands. And then keep this upward current of energy. Think up and over. So actually imagine you were holding a beach ball here at your belly. So you have big, big ball here, and you're gonna go up and over into a forward fold. Nice and slow. When you're ready, the spine starts to round. You can release the fingertips wherever it feels comfortable. And you're gonna bring your head towards your knees. Now you might just get this far. You might stay up pretty tall. You might need to make adjustments with where you're sitting on the chair. But you want to get to a place where you can take some solid, delicious, feel good, let go breaths. And as you inhale in here, my friends, feel the skin of the back body stretch. Can you experiment with that? Can you feel the rise and the fall? Let the breath move you. Take one more cycle of breath. Let it be full.
And then first bring the hands up to the thighs then plant the feet firmly, really feel the feet pressing into the earth as you tuck the chin and slowly roll it up. And then as you roll it up, feel that flash of energy, the blood flow opposite direction. And if you need to, if that was a, a big move for you, you can bring the hands to the chair for a little more stability, a little grounding. In case you got a little dizzy or a little head rush. Great, take a deep breath in. Exhale out through the mouth. Again, inhale in through the nose, come on. Exhale, let something go. And one more time, let's sigh it out. Inhale with sound. Worry. Letting it all go. Wonderful, open your eyes. Take a little moment to just notice how you feel. Tap into a little inner smile, maybe even lift the corners of your mouth slightly. Then we'll bring the hands together at the heart to seal our practice. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your energy with me and the rest of the community, everyone practicing with you through this video. Let us know how it went down below. Questions, comments, always welcome. Subscribe to the Yoga with Adrian channel if you haven't already. Share it with your friends and your family and take good care. I'll see you next time. Namaste. I feel pretty good. Yes. Yes. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday and we're already ready to rock it. Oh, family. Don't forget, because of all the trauma, I am a badass and superhero, but I also need my medical marijuana family. That's what these are. These are my bait pens. They're filled with butane hash oil. Um, and I am fully medicated from the moment I wake up in the morning until I go to bed, family. And I no longer get the euphoric feeling of being high. I actually just feel calmer. And I don't want a panic attack to overcome me. Um, I basically have really bad anxiety, family. And every morning when I wake up, I am threatened to be overcome with nauseousness and feeling overwhelmed and almost crippling. It depends on the day. Which is why this coyote uses my medication in order to help me regulate my moods. Well, not my moods, but the feelings of not being sick, basically. Right? Because I can't control. I mean, I can help reduce stress, obviously. Mm -hmm. I can be aware when I'm triggered, which is hugely important, family. Writing my dissertation is hugely triggering for me because I'm a critical autoethnographer. I write about my own life. I'm writing about my rape and molestation. I'm writing about police brutality. I'm writing about being stuck in my house for nine months after that unlawful arrest. Suing the police officer, surviving an academic white male tenure professor who was preying on myself and my family, right? My cohort, we were, we were hurt. I was hurt. He would hurt me on purpose because he could, because he had power over me. Um, and he'd trigger my PTSD episodes on purpose. So if he felt bad, he would make me and my friend and this other person feel bad too. And that was scary family. I don't want anyone to have to feel the same sort of trauma to go through the same cycles of abuse, which is why I'm doing my project, right? Why I'm doing this research, why I'm making videos, telling everyone about my life that's filled with crazy trauma family should not be the case. It should not be the case. But I'm sharing my stories and hope that my nieces and nephews don't have to repeat the cycle. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Once we truly face our fears, once we do the work that we're supposed to be doing, well, then we start creating the change that we need. Don't forget, family, this coyote is also pastor of Coyote's Lodge, House of Spirituality, Critical Race Theory, and Medical Marijuana. Our services are every other Wednesday, family. And tomorrow I'm starting again. It's hard to be a spiritual leader. It's hard to be any kind of leader. It's hard to be a human being when your heart's not right, when you're not in a good place. 
So forgive this coyote for not having church services for about a month, family, because I was not in a good place and I was being bullied. <laughs> Watch for those videos, family. Um, and I was being stressed out by the world because again, people wanted to use their power to hurt others. And when we're hurt family, it's usually for another reason. So today is a healing prayer. And don't forget family, our church is not a house of religion or God, but rather a house of spirituality. It's a community space where we love, we share our experiences, our stories, and the readings come from critical race theory, sociology, original uh, indigenous epistemologies like coyote Napsi, trickster stories. And when we pray, we talk to our ancestors and we ask for their blessings. So today I'm gonna offer up this sage to our family, those who have gone before us. And I'm asking for some inspiration and for a little bit of healing love, Gammy. <sighs> Gammy, as we offer up the stage today and talk to you and all of our ancestors gone before us. COVID is still affecting our lives, Cammie. There's still trauma happening and we are still losing our loved ones. There's still uncertainty in our future and we feel scared. We're frightened of what we don't know. And because of that, Gammy, sometimes we lash out and we are mean because when we are scared and hurt, we scare and hurt others. So allow us to start the healing journey that we need to begin because we're all a little hurt and we need to start healing. So Gammy, send us some love, send us some comfort and a little bit of joy so that we again can remember what it is to be a human being. Thank you, Gammy, and may you rest in peace. Papa, oh, Papa, I miss you. I've been thinking about you more and more. I miss your stories. I miss spending time with you. I miss how we would just wail away the hours, whittle away the hours, doing nothing more than looking at the Sunday paper. Papa, when I was a child with you, I felt at peace. And when I was a grown adult, I did not value the gift of your wisdom. But I thank you for the time that you spent with me, Papa, because that love was healing to me. Even the world was scary. I knew I could run to my Papa and everything would be okay. Allow all of our family around the world to have the same sense of safety and security with someone. May they all find that person that they can find love with. Love is paramount to healing and love is my guiding light. So may you, Papa, send us some love and may it shine bright in each of our lives. May you rest in peace, Papa. And to my great, great grandpa, Pablo Beta, true revolutionary and a sled public statesman, and to all of our ancestors who have gone before us, both blood adopted and those we have adopted, Look kindly in all of your communities and allow us to shine bright. There is a new year that is coming, a new dawn is upon us. And may we start it with a fresh slate. May we start healing old wounds so that our lives can continue on burden. Thank you so much for the sacrifices as we continue to walk in your path today. Ah, family, I feel filled with hope again. I have a scary thing to do. My dissertation is scary. And I got two weeks. <laughs> December 1st is my deadline, family. And it's going to be okay. I got my notes, I got my outlines, and I got my global family. So there ain't nothing that we can't do together. Ah, this coyote is off to go cause trouble somewhere else. 
There is a Ujima meeting today, and this coyote is a mentor for the Critical Race Studies and Education Association family. Chris Say, yeah, C R S E A dot O R G. Check out our website. Now, I love y'all. I'll see you soon. Bye. Don't forget, so we're only doing this twice a week now. Tuesdays around 10 15 in the morning for our hashtag chair yoga for elders on Thursdays 10 15 a.m morning for hashtag our meditation moment twice a week family we're gonna work on our bodies but this coyote always does her cardio every day so look for my check-in every day Monday through Friday family and call me out if you don't see my check-in be like coyote where's your cardio <laughs> I love you, family. Let's go off and I'll cause some trouble somewhere.